so, um, so it goes on, the story goes on in verse 2, 2 Kings uh, chapter 4, verse 2, he says, Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And then she said, your servant has nothing there at all, she explained, except a little oil. Let's quickly turn to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 is um, the portion of scripture that Dr. Jonathan David used. Let's just quickly turn to Isaiah 55. And so it starts in verse 1. It says, Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And your soul will delight in the riches of fair. And then it says, Give ear and come to me. But specifically those words, listen, listen to me, and you will eat. So what I've discovered, and that is the second point that I believe we need to understand when we talk about um, the season our nation is and, and, and how God wants to use us, I believe, is that there's a direct correlation between listen and eat. Between tapping in from God and drawing from the Spirit and hearing from God and getting the strategy from God and implementing it, and seeing the provision, getting the experience of how the provision just breaks forth in your hands. Now the problem is that we don't always understand that the miracle is in the house. I say the miracle is in the house. That means that God has already prepared you and me for, for the next season. It's already in our hands. It's already here. Okay, the problem is the way we look at it. Because we look in the natural at it. So we like that willow and we say that, you know, I've got this little bit of oil. And so if I take this little bit of oil, I might sell it, you know, and there's a natural process. I might get a little bit of, of profit. Then, then I'm going to buy more oil. And then I'm going to sell that and make even more profit. Then I'm going to buy a little bit more oil. And then so I will continue with the process until I've got enough profit to pay off my debt. But that's not how God operates. God says, if you listen, meaning if you tap into the heavenlies, if you touch me and you get a specific strategy from me and you see it from me and you implement it, the natural becomes supernatural. It's exactly the same formula or the same pattern that repeats itself when Jesus in, in Matthew chapter 14, when he said to the disciples, they, they came to him and said, but Lord, there are 5,000 people here. You know, we, we need to feed them. And he says, what have you got? Why don't you feed them? Meaning that you've got the responsibility to do that. And then the second question, what have you got in your hand? What have you got? Five loaves and two fish. So this is impossible, Lord. And then they work out a strategy. Maybe we must get the money and, you know, it's going to take too long to go to the nearest town and then get food, etc., etc. So they... They only had sight in the natural, and then Jesus said, no, bring it here. And then he started to open up the supernatural dimension to them. And we need to understand this. We need, you remember that, that um, example that Pastor Cornelius gave, that when you look at your four fingers here, and you only look at the fingers, you've got sight. You can see them, one, two, three, four. But if you look through your four fingers, where Ray is sitting right now, and I look at Ray, suddenly the four becomes eight. And there's a different dimension that opens up. And I say these things because we need to understand that when we speak to people, God wants to use you, my brother and my sister. Not the pastor or the cell leader or the area leader only. He wants to use you where you are. Because he, His hand is on your life and He has placed you in a specific job and a specific family and in a specific capacity. And He has equipped you and when you tap into the heavenlies, he can place his hand upon you and the natural can become supernatural so that the thousands in our country can become fed. Do you take it in the spirit? Amen? But then we in, need to enter into that different dimension. I explained this morning, maybe I must do it again, that if I draw a line here in front of me 
and I only operate in two dimensions, and somebody tells me, you have to get from this side to that side, I have to walk all the way around the line, all the way here, and then I'm here, where I'm supposed to be, if I operate in two dimensions. If I understand the principle of three dimensions, all that I'll simply do is I'll step over the line, and I'm here at the place where I'm supposed to be, because a different dimension has been added. So this guy that operates in two dimensions will be freaked out to say, but you know, how on earth did you get it right to run all the way in, in so, you know, this fast time? It's impossible, I don't understand. You will not understand it because you operate in two dimensions. And it works exactly the same way when you operate in the spirit. When we operate in our spirit, we've got the capacity to operate in a different dimension. And that's what I'm talking about. So, um, so you take what you've got. God has equipped you in so many ways. God has equipped you in so many ways. And God wants to use you beyond what you can think or pray. It's not here, it's here. But then you need to tap into the Spirit and access that dimension. Let's just quickly turn to Isaiah 66. When I prepared, I just, um, I just um, got, remembered the Scripture and um, it speaks about the very same thing. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 8. I'm just going to read verse 7. So before she goes, and, and, and he, the prophecy is speaking about Israel, or actually a pregnant woman that depicts Israel. So before she goes into labor, she gives birth. Before the pains come upon her, she delivers a son. Who has ever heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion, you remember we spoke about Zion, yet no sooner is Zion in labor than she gives birth to her children. This means that there's a natural process of giving birth, etc., etc., but this, this scripture says that if God places his hand on the natural processes, it becomes supernatural, it accelerates the processes so that there's a birth and there's something new suddenly in front of us. Amen? So we might stand here and we might say that we've got these challenges and these challenges and these challenges all over the place in our country. How on earth is it possible that a church can do that? With God, nothing is impossible. If we tap into the Spirit and we get the strategies from God and we pull down the supernatural hand of God, God can make the natural processes supernatural so that the thousands, the need of the thousands can be met. And God wants to do it through you and me. Amen? So let's say these things when speak, people speak about you know, the challenges in our country. But what, what about this? And what about this? And those people don't do this and this. No. Just say, you know what? God wants to use you. You've got, you've got a capacity that God has placed inside of you. And if you bring it to God and allow God to work through you, God's going to use you in a mighty way to bring solutions in this country to be part of the solution. Amen? Isn't that what Deuteronomy 28 says, that we're going to be part of the solution and not the problem? So let's take it by the Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's go on to the second point. We said, so we need to tap into God. We need to listen and eat. Listen and eat. So if we listen, there's provision. So, um, so the next one is um, that God wants to fill us with good things. In Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2, and again, this is um, what Dr. Jonathan David spoke to us about specifically in this portion. He says, come, it speaks about water. He says, come all you are thirsty, come to the waters. Um, at the last part of verse 1, it says, it speaks about wine and milk. In uh, verse 2, it speaks about bread. So, um, so what we need to understand is that God wants to, when God provides, when His provision breaks forth, when we tap into the Spirit, and we get the strategies of God, and the provision of God breaks forth. He provides good things. He provides good things. You remember we spoke about the, the, um, our Lord's Prayer, how to position ourselves accurately through prayer. You mem remember that? Two weeks ago, please say yes. Okay. So, um, so you remember that? We said, and, and at that portion in the prayer where it says, and give us today our daily bread. Remember we said, we, we, we spoke about this, that 
in that portion we say, God, I'm asking everything that you will, will fill me up and you'll give me everything that I need to sustain me, that your name will be glorified, that your kingdom will come, and that your will be done in and through my life. So Lord, fill me up and give me everything emotionally, spiritually, physically, in relationships, everything. Lord, fill me up and give it to me so that it sustains me throughout the day so that I can glorify your name and usher in your kingdom and allow your will to come in every aspect of my life. All right? Because you are the source. By implication, you say, Lord, I don't have it in myself. It's not in me, it's in you. And so I'm asking this from you, and when you do that, Lord, you fill me and my cup runs over. And you remember in that time we also spoke about that tree in Psalm 1 where it says that the tree planted next to the rivers are, you know, it, it's just green and the leaves are there and it's yielding its fruit in its season. Remember that? So when we position ourselves in prayer accurately next to that stream and we draw from the living water, people will look at us and they will come to our lives and they will see their fruit, and they will pick the fruit, and they will taste the fruit. And as Psalm 34 verse 8 says, they will taste and they will see that the Lord is good. So my brother, my sister, this is not only for ourselves, but it's critically important that we allow God that we position ourselves in this season so accurately. Grant that our lives are so full of God, so that when people touch you, they will experience something of God. When they push you in a certain direction, they agitate you and they want to get a reaction, they get God. They want to irritate you and they push you, push you, push you until they get a reaction. And when they, that reaction comes, it's God. And then they say, but there's something different in this man. There's something different in this woman. And what is it? They need to taste and see that God is good. I just want to say that when we speak about these things, I also realize that in some areas in our life, we might not be whole. We might not be flourishing at this current moment. I think in, in, you know, this is a process in my life, in your life. God is constantly busy with us in processes. Amen? So, um, so let's allow God that He fills every area in our life where we don't feel whole. And we don't feel that we are like that tree in Psalm 1. That, that, that are yielding fruit. So if God is speaking to you right now, the Holy Spirit is just addressing certain areas in your life, just close your eyes where you are right now. Just where you are. If God is showing you right now certain areas in your life, just bring it before Him. I just experienced we just, should just pause here for a moment. If you say this is the end of 2013, but there are certain areas where I, I feel that I'm not flourishing, not like I should. Just allow God to lift it out and just bring it before His throne. Yes, Father, thank You that I can just pray for every person that, that is just bringing these things to Your throne. And Father, I just pray that You will move mightily through Your Spirit, that they will not enter 2014 until you have brought life and abundance in each one of these areas. Father, I pray that they will take it as a promise that you will be faithful through the inward working of your spirit, that, you will, that the life and the abundance will break forth, that they are trust you, that it should break forth. Father, I pray if they need to go and speak to leaders, if they need to go and speak to, to a cell leader, Father, that they will just take the boldness through your spirit to open up so that your healing can come in those areas. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just experience, for those of you who've done that, take it as a promise that God says that you don't have to go into 2014 not experiencing the life and the abundance that God has planned you should have in that area. Whether it's bondage, whether it's, it's, um, it's slavery in a certain area, whether it's, it's debt, what, debt, whatever, just take it as a promise to say that, you know, I'm going to cling to God and His life and His abundance is going to break forth. Amen. Amen. Let's stand in faith with them. Amen.